You guys didn't come to see me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Morning, everybody. Uh, it's my pleasure to welcome to the stage Eric Lindros, yeah, NHL yeah. Hall of Famer. Um, so the, the purpose of today is to have a conversation and um, talk through some of your stories and your experiences sure. and help us all learn from someone who is one of the best of the best at what he's done and um, learn about some of your, your current work now as well. But if, if it's okay, we'll start at the beginning. Sure. sure. Um, starting out playing hockey mm -hmm. early on, what got you into the sport? I had a lot of energy as a kid. Okay. And my mom put me into uh, uh, skating lessons, power skating, and uh, things grew from there. I, I think growing up in London, Ontario, uh, I was there until I was about 10. Um, then my dad was transferred to Toronto, so from then on we were, we were here based in Toronto. That's, all we, that's what we did. Uh, you, you come back after school, it was road hockey or, you know, uh, or find some open ice. And being, being here uh, and in Ontario, I think we're extremely blessed. We have great facilities. We've got uh, public money that, uh, that sets up outdoor arenas and allows mm. you to get extra ice. Um, my dad, we actually took out a swimming pool and you know, had a rink. <laughs> so <laughs> it was, uh, we, were, we were outside all the time and that's just what we, uh, we love yeah. to do. And, and uh, my brother and I played uh, constantly. Yeah. Did you play other sports as well, or mostly? Yeah, other and I think this is something that's pretty important. Is 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 giving. Uh, I, I see now a lot of these younger players playing hockey or whatever their sport is, mm. 12 months a year, and I just don't believe in it. The science is 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 saying that, uh, especially in the concussion situation, um, that if you're not giving your brain a chance to heal. Uh, because it's always constantly trying to rejuvenate, uh, you're, you're going to step into the, the next season uh, depleted. Mm -hmm. um, and honestly, I, it, was, it was good to have a, a change. Uh, my parents were tired of, of driving me from, to, from rink to rink, so they gave me the old TTC bus pass and off to Taylor Field for baseball, uh, or I rode my bike. Uh, so, and then you have your hockey buddies, but you also have baseball buddies. And, and so you, you're not just with the same crew all the time. And, uh, I think that's uh, diversity is is important as well. So, um, yeah, a, a bit nervous that, ki that kids are are playing constantly. Um, I'd like to see that change. Yeah. Yeah. And as you started out your career in hockey, you know, throughout the course of your career, you were known for your competitiveness, your toughness, um, your physical play. Was that something that started young, or something that I wasn't developed? Always, I was I was uh, tall uh, as a kid, and then I started to play up years mm. so uh, and sometimes two three and so and I hit puberty late so I was uh, between the ages of 12 and, and, and uh, you know 15 I was kind of in the, the lower the lower end of things uh, mm. uh, in terms of uh, in terms of size and, and, and weight which I think is interesting too I mean I, I'll keep going back to concussion and I get <laughs> quite involved with it but I'm not I'm not sure that there needs to be contact uh, in hockey, uh, up to the uh, until the age of 15 or six, 15, uh, mm. 15, 16, because at that time everyone has hit puberty. Everyone mm. has gone through the growth spurt. There isn't a, a one kid that's 185 pounds, and you know, uh, and another kid that's uh, that's much smaller. I think uh, uh, I think that'd be something to look at. You can always learn to, to to deal with body contact, and I think it's still an important part of the game. Mm. Uh, but at the same time, let's work on skill. Let's work on other. Uh, uh, other facets of the game and, and, and improve in that direction. How did you develop some of your skills? Was it a backyard. lot of backyard work? Yeah, yeah. yeah. My dad, uh, my dad was fantastic too. Uh, he'd spent countless hours with us, and uh, I think I got. It was a blessing to have my dad. He was part of the Chicago Blackhawks organization for a very short period of time, and he was a really shitty player. <laughs> <laughs> But it, it worked out well because I, it, his passing was so bad that I forced me to take pucks off the inside and outside <laughs> blades to get them to my stick. This is, this is what we still joke about these, uh, today. Um, uh, so yeah, there was, uh, uh, you know, it, it's just practice. And it yeah. doesn't seem like practice because you're, you're just doing it. It mm. doesn't seem like, uh, it, it was just fun. Yeah. 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 So from early age, it was fun enjoying yourself, learning mm -hmm. on sk learning skills just do fun in the backyard. 
Yeah. So as you started to experience success uh, as a young player, how did you manage some of those expectations and some of the pressures around developing skills and developing into a, an elite player? I think you just focus on having fun and what you're doing. And if you can insulate yourself a little bit on, on, on that, uh, um, that's, that's, you know, it's easy to say, uh, but the, certainly the route to go. And that, you know, having, having good guidance, having, I was lucky my, my parents were, uh, were athletic and, and, and uh, uh, engaged and, and protective of their mm -hmm. kids, mm -hmm. I, I think is, the, is, is another aspect to it. Um, but uh, focus sometimes, it, it wavers, especially in, in your kids too. You're growing mm -hmm. up and there's other, you know, uh, you get to different ages and there's other interests and, 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 and things like that. But uh, uh, if the true nature, like if you're happiest doing and playing hockey or whatever the, the sport is, that is where it all starts and stops. Was that someone shared that with you? Or was that advice that you got from someone or is that something that you That's learned? just from within. I think that, yeah. you know, I, I, I was thinking back to, you know, you asked me about skills and, and, and practice and I, I never, I knew when it was time to retire because it was the first year that I would look up at the practice clock and, oh my God, another 20 minutes of this. I just, I <laughs> knew right then. I never used to look at the clock and that year, my last year, I would, I would look at the clock and I knew that it was time to, yeah. to move on. I wasn't uh, having, yeah. having fun and if you're not having fun, then it's, you're not gonna, you're not gonna play well. Yeah. So up until that point, your whole career, it was fun and most of it was extremely practicing. fun. Yeah, There's some years obviously more so than others. More than others. I yeah. think that can be said for for anyone's life, or yeah. whether you're, uh, yeah, whether you're playing hockey or or, or or doing anything else. So, what would you say is the best advice that you got early on in your career, or during the course of your career? Best feedback, advice from anyone? Advice in yeah. what sense? Uh, schooling was always important at our house. Ooh. Mm -hmm. uh, without schooling as a backup, I mean anything can happen. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes we we throw all our eggs in the one basket and we don't have a backup plan or or, or plan C. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that could correlate to what's going on in a person's life, where you're looking at an athlete or you're trying to help an athlete, but you're not understanding all the other parts mm -hmm. that make up his uh, his or her his or her life, uh, whether it be family. Uh, uh, whether it be education, a trouble mm. at school, whether it be any other circumstance that you just don't see, all you're seeing is, 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 that, uh, is that athlete. Mm. Um, yeah. And you mentioned as a leader, that seemed like part of your strategy as a leader is to get to know your teammates and, and care for them. Can you talk more about your approach? You were a leader early on in your career. Well, I, got, I played up a lot of years and mm. I was surrounded by older guys that would mm. look out for me and, and you know, I would, <laughs> <Not all. laughs> it wasn't always the best circumstances, but it, you know they were they were uh, the effort was there, and we were having fun, and and, uh, uh, and we were learning together. But being around mm -hmm. older people, you 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 tend to take on some of their habits and and, and, mm -hmm. and learn a learn a bit here and there. It's uh, it's one of those things where you uh, if a team is made of comprised of twenty three people and, and and four or five aren't aren't doing well, you're not going to be that great of a team. Um, so what is the problem? What is the situation? How can we help? And maybe it's just inviting them over for dinner. You know, here, uh, come on over. I can, here's an extra plate. Uh, let's go have uh, this or let's go to a movie. Uh, getting to know your teammates. Uh, we had, would have constantly having rookies come in from Europe. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you got to think of what are they going through? Here is a, a complete culture change. Travel is completely different. Mm -hmm. They've probably never played in, in, in such an environment. Um, what can we, what can, what can be done to smooth that transition, make them feel more at home, and uh, and inviting them into your home and, and and making them part of your day to day and picking them up every once in a while for for carpool or things like that where you're, you're chatting um, is fantastic to uh, to open up a conversation and then when you really need somebody uh, in a game they're there yeah. you're they're there for you guys are there for each other yeah yeah. And you were known as a player who was who was there every game consistently, could take over, could Not every game, games. but I was trying to. <laughs> <laughs> trying. Not everything is roses. So how did how did you prepare mentally to perform night after night? The you know NHL season is a lot of games. Yeah, so what was your yeah, approach? it's a lot of games, and there's highs and lows, and you know everyone talks about you know the the February blues mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. Uh, 
Um, really, I think it all comes down to being able to rely on, on each other and, and having, uh, being in a situation that's, that's, uh, that's adaptable. Uh, you got to keep changing, whether it's your style adapting to other people are going to adapt to what you're doing. So you got to be able to adapt to what they're doing mm -hmm. and having open mindedness and, 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 and not just being stuck in one groove, changing your style as you flow through a season, um, ebbing and weaving, you know, maybe uh, the, the true basis is not you're getting away uh, from from your um, uh, your peak performance level. Uh, maybe it's time to crack the whip and let's have some real hard uh, uh, cardiovascular skates um, mm. and, and get our, our base back up because if our base is back up then we're not gonna be making silly mistakes in the third period due to fatigue other mm. you know you can make them do to other situations and there's lots of them and uh, mm. you know you're always gonna this it's gonna happen from time to time but let's take out as many of the let's let's look at where we are every day and how can we change mm. to to get through the, the season and then when you get into that 70 game mark if you're playing 82 games a season you get into 70 you start to ramp up for playoffs Who's available? What goal are you going to go with? Um, who's playing well at the time? Who do we need to be bringing up from uh, from the minors? Um, you know, what what's yeah. our what's our goal here, and how are we going to go about it? Yeah. So it sounded like you're really open-minded and able to adapt to other teams and the circumstance of the season, the ebbs and flows. Well, I, yeah. I mean, it's what hockey's about, I, I guess. And I keep, you know, uh, it's what I know, mm. um, or or, 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 th or think I have a pretty good understanding of, but. It's hockey lends itself to transaction or transition and, and change because you know you play a period and you go in for 20 minutes while they're cleaning the ice and you can adjust you can communicate mm -hmm. make small small changes if they're if they're uh, they're adapting to the way that you're doing something then well let's change it up and be able to, to mm -hmm. be nimble with things and I, I, I think that's fantastic I think that's I think that's great I think you, you'll see that a lot in, in football how a team will come in and look like they're absolutely dead mm -hmm. in the first half and come out in the second half and be, uh, you know, a, a totally different, uh, totally different group. It's one. It's very hard to do on the sidelines when something is going on. But mm. once you get people into addressing them and there's great communication and there's a really good coach, then you're going to see some change. Yeah. You mentioned mistakes also, and folks talk about hockey as a game of mistakes. What were some of your strategies to overcome mistakes, move past mistakes um, quickly? Because yeah, it's it's a fast game. Happen. It's a fast game, but you also make some boneheaded moves too. Let's not, <laughs> let's not kid ourselves. It's not. Oh, there's some beauties. Sooner or later, the more you play, sooner or later you're gonna end up. Tell us the, about some beauties. Uh, what was the, the come on, tell us about some beauties. <laughs> they have those highlight packages, you know, the top ten or whatever. But the the show you really want to avoid is this month's review of the bad ones, right? Yeah. The, the, the worst. But sooner or later you're gonna hit it. It's just inevitable. Uh, yeah, I've. Uh, yeah, I've made some really bad passes. <laughs> Blind passes, mm. backhand passes, straight into the slot. Yeah, yeah not so good. Yeah. They weren't. Uh, they didn't turn out well. But uh, anyway, I think the key to that is 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 seeing it, and, and there's a balance here. I, I think right away you, you get back on the horse if your your coach is, um, you know, you try and park it. I think it's a it's a skill that you want to learn where you just okay, this has happened. It's one isolated incident. And I'm just gonna, it's gone. And, and if your coach is willing to get you back out there and put you in that position to, to get going again, I think that's great. And then you start building fresh again on, 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 on what you've uh, accomplished and, and, uh, and that shift and, and start to start the, the, the same process again. But uh, um, not having the chance, it's only gonna deplete things, I, th I believe. Um, now it comes to a point where, you know, if you're, you keep getting sent out and you keep making the same mistake. It's a professional game. You're getting paid to play well. Yeah. You're getting, you want to win. The team wants you to win. And you, you just have to, you know, you go ride the pine or, or you're you know, like, you're done. Mm. Some, and some yeah. days you just don't, some days you're not on, yeah. you know, it's, it's uh, even the best get, the uh, best goaltenders uh, get pulled from the net from time to time. Right. Yeah, so that's true. Uh, not everyone's perfect. And, and, and uh, uh, that's the way it goes. What did you do on you know some of those rare occasions when maybe you didn't have your A game? You know, like yeah. how did you? What did you do to get through it? I went back to just some basics. What am I? What can I do? I, I'm, 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 my hands aren't there tonight. <laughs> I, you know, I'm laying bricks. I am, I am uh, having a real tough go with that. But what can I do to, <coughs> uh, to simplify things? So I would focus on puck possession. 
I would focus on simple things like winning faceoffs so that you're starting, your, your team is at least starting with the puck. I would focus on uh, positional play. If I'm not going to be, you know, in a position to score all that much uh, at, at, this, at this stage, let's, I'm going to at least make sure that they're not going to be able to score against, mm. uh, or I'm not going to be in a, uh, losing my defensive side of things. So, and then sooner or later it starts to build out. You start to, you know, you get an opportunity, you get a little, uh, little bounce comes your way. Mm. And that's the great thing about hockey is it's always, it's, it's never set in stone. It's, something's always happening. There's, there's caroms and there's, there's uh, deflections and, and mm. the puck can end up anywhere at any one time. And then you go from feeling really bad about yourself to having a, a really good play and, 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 and moving on. But uh, yeah. never letting yourself get too low where you, can't, where you think that you, you can't, contribute or you're, mm. you're not a, at least effective. So finding other ways to contribute. Well, it sounds like simplified, play the defensive that side. That and confidence, mm. right? And, and to think and to get to the bench and think, all right, I'm not having my best game, but 80% of me is going to be better than, you know what I mean? Mm. And, and that might sound, uh, but you need to have a little bit of confidence. Yeah. If you don't have the confidence, you're, uh, you're in trouble. Yeah. You're in big trouble. So the other side of that coin then is some of your best performances what was that like? Can you describe uh, one of your best games or best They just seem to fly by. Uh, you're having so much fun. Uh, mm -hmm. You're enjoying it with your teammates. And uh, hockey is such a beautiful game that you're not going to have success unless people around you are, are having fun and having mm -hmm. success themselves. Mm -hmm. So you're sharing it. You're sharing that moment. Um, those things are great. I, I love that, that aspect of, uh, of hockey and the, and the team approach to it. Yeah, the yeah. team environment, yeah. playing with the other guys. Speaking of team, South Buffalo, oh. have you given your background? What's that? Have you spoken to, uh, of your background? Oh, here? no, we're, we're focusing on you tonight. Oh, this wow. morning. <laughs> Ladies <laughs> helping out with the Buffalo Sabres <laughs> as their mental, uh, their mental coach. <laughs> Yeah, and, yeah, and it's interesting to see the highs and lows of the season, and you know they they do find that Buffalo emotional roller coaster. Either, really yeah, there's <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately good. on the way up. <laughs> we're on the way up. Mm, this good. is true. Yeah, yeah. So if we, you know, you talked about some of your highs. You know, you went through some challenges with injuries. Mm -hmm. What allowed you to persevere through that? Like, what was your process to get through some of those challenges and get back out there on the ice and keep competing? There's a couple different things, and I, I think it depends on the injury, but certainly you're never going to perform if you're not in top physical shape. Mm. And whether you, you know, even if you can't compete uh, in a certain, certain way, if it's a leg injury, then you're going to be on that, that UBE bike mm. uh, doing the, the most that you can upper body wise. Uh, you're, you're finding ways to, to stay with it and, and to mentally be, be there. Uh, as you get closer to returning, being on, coming down and watching the game, it's one thing to watch a game from the TV or the press box and you're, God, these guys are slow. Mm. And then when you get down <laughs> to ice level, it's just like this, right? So you, you, you get a feel, you get your foot, your, your toe in the water, mm. per se, of, 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 of what's going on. And, and uh, what I don't understand about some, some circumstances is that some teams, if you're injured, they completely separate you from the rest of the group. And they put you off in this little pack where you're, it's almost like you're, uh, you're quarantined. Mm. Uh, you're not part of the group. You're not part of, of, of what's going on. Uh, you're not part of the jokes in the dressing room. You're, you skate at a separate time. You lift weights at a separate time. You're not allowed to travel. You're, and I don't get that at all because in terms of healing and, and, and you think about a, a young kid that's maybe 20 years old, doesn't have a family, uh, is here alone, uh, whatever the case may be. By isolating that per I don't think that's that's mm -hmm. the way to go about it if you want to build uh, uh, a group environment. I always I always struggled with that, and a lot of teams continue to do it, but I I, I don't uh, I don't see it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely a challenging part during yeah. during the return from injury. Absolutely. So uh, you you mentioned a number of times the importance of the group and the collective and the folks around you. You were part of a pretty dominant line, centered the line known as the Legion of Doom. Can you tell us about what that was like to have? We just had fun. John McClair was, uh, we had a big trade. We, uh, John McClair and Eric Desjardins and Gilbert Dion came in from Montreal and, and we had a, a winger go the other direction. And then we, uh, we drafted Michael Redberg. Uh, he was in Sweden uh, in the second round. He came and he came in. And I, you know, Michael is, is pretty quiet. He was, I, d I didn't know how this was going to turn out. And, and, and we were in Tampa 
and um, you know he came in after having a, a, a tough time. He had two really good chances to score. He didn't score, and all of a sudden you hear the sticks breaking. Uh, you know, I, I, I like this guy. <laughs> this, guy's, this guy's fired <laughs> up. Michael's, and Michael's got emotion, and he's he's right into it. And and then Johnny came in, and we were uh, we just had a, a great deal of fun. We all lived in the same area. Uh, we would see each other uh, uh, off the ice. Um, uh, everything was, every, it was great, you know, we'd go out for dinner all the time and, and not just us, but the, the group. We had our best teams, if I look back to it, uh, our, some of our best years were uh, as a team when we, there was probably 10 or 11 of us all within a three kilometer radius of one another. Wow. So we were in the, yeah, we lived, uh, we close lived close together. Lived close together, everyone together. had similar interests. Yeah. Um, there was, there was a nice, there was a good feel to it. Yeah close together. Mm -hmm. You mentioned uh, the emotions of the game as well and could you talk us through a little bit about you know the emotional preparation before a game? You know were you too high, were you too low? Did yeah. you feel like you were optimal and how did you know? I think you get better at it as you get older. Uh, sometimes I think there's a little bit of wasted energy in, in, in preparing yourself, um, amping yourself. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you want to go through your visual visualizations. You want to think about who, who you're going to be up against, what line you're going to be up against. Um, uh, what are the what are, what is this player that I'm going to be going up against? What are their what are their weaknesses? What are their strengths? Mm. Uh, what can I do to 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 exploit things? So you, you go through that uh, um, before before time, um, and it gets simpler, and you get to know the players as they're coming through and then it's just a matter of when there's a, a fresh face or someone called up um, or a trade from the west coast to the western conference to the eastern conference that you don't really normally see that player all that mm -hmm. often then you're refreshing but once you get it in there you kind of have your your black book in your in your mm -hmm. head and you and you uh you can you you can rely on it you can mm -hmm. you can you can go to it um but preparation was uh, personally for me uh and this is good and bad because i um uh, I would try and be as consistent as possible. And it was, I would get into trouble when something happened that would knock my timing off or, you know, traffic on the way to the game. Mm -hmm. I would like to be out of there at the game at a certain time. Little things that I think when you're older, you ebb and flow with a little bit better than, 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 uh, than when you're a little bit younger. Um, but I really relied on consistency, um, whether it be the, you know, pregame meal, uh, sleeping on time in the afternoon, you know, getting to the rink uh, ready to go in, in, in lots of time, um, going through the routine. Mm -hmm. uh, I relied on that. I thought a routine was important to have and, mm -hmm. and any variation of it. I got better at overcoming, but mm -hmm. there were days when it was, it was frustrating. Yeah. What were some of the details of your routine, if you don't mind sharing? No, oh, it was <laughs> all that exciting, really. Uh, the, the day of a game, you, you essentially uh, you, you wake up and, and head over for pregame skate, and whether you're on the road or at home, uh, yeah, I, I would like to eat uh, relatively early, mm -hmm. uh, so try and eat around uh, 12 o'clock, uh, 12 15, and hockey's you know hockey's the best game in the world. You guys are cruising around the rest of the planet. We're tucked into our covers and taking a and nap, taking a nap <laughs> and resting uh, resting for. Uh, uh, for the night and, and before you go to bed, you're thinking, all right, I'm playing against so-and-so. They're, they're right-handed shot, left-handed shot. Mm. Uh, this is what I can expect. The goalie has got a great glove. Let's think low stick. Uh, that defenseman is weak to the outside. Let's exploit him with speed. Uh, but they're very good doing this. And then their go-to move on the power play if I'm penalty killing is the cross-crease cross, cross crease one time scenario. Yeah. Uh, so you have. How did you learn the visualization? Is that something that you just started doing? Did someone guide you I, in that? It just started to happen. I think. Uh, uh, yeah, it just started to happen. You just started to think of, of packing away information, and, mm. and, and and when when can it be used? And uh, I, I don't think it happened a whole lot in junior because you would teams would change a little bit, or players would change. Mm. Uh, it, it's just it's something that you, you learn to, it grows with you. You learn to, to do it better uh, and more efficiently and, and, uh, and you can rely on it. It's, uh, 
I think visualization is a big tool. Yeah, and that's one of the tools that as practitioners, a lot of us would guide athletes and, mm -hmm. and help them in that area. Mm -hmm. um, what, what is the, the feel, what was the feel around sports psychology practitioners and It's hard, it's different. Uh, and you must feel it too. So you've got, you're working for a team, your paycheck's coming from a team, and then you're walking into 23 guys in a dressing room and saying, tell me <laughs> what's going on in your inner thoughts and trust me. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, you're being paid by, by someone that if the information that is being said, uh, it was at a real um, serious level, uh, um, it could possibly be detrimental to that person's career. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that's a tough one to walk and gaining trust in that situation is not always the easiest You're gonna find a few that will uh, No problem all good and dandy. You're gonna find a few that have their own. Mm -hmm. I think that many of the a lot of the guys that are, are skeptical of things uh, will have their own they seem to have guys these days have their own you know trainers off the ice their own mental coach uh, and and then uh, they get into the nutrition so I think mm -hmm. those are the three Mm -hmm. uh, three areas there and there's different variations of them as well there's there's the buddy that always keeps you keeps you up <laughs> with you know mm -hmm. uh, so you, it's it's tough to, for you to walk into a situation and to it's not like you just walk in the door and they're all going to be opening their their hearts to you and their yeah. and their their inner beliefs and and, and truths yeah. any suggestions for those of us who are trying to do that work it's How slow. It's better? A, you have to show that you're there for the person mm -hmm. and to stick up for that person or group of individuals if it was something that you noticed was a uh, was a was affecting more than just the one mm -hmm. um, but even if it's just one you have to show that things are you're out for them you have their back mm -hmm. and that there's a sense of a sense of trust and loyalty and mm -hmm. no one's gonna do anything unless they see results mm -hmm. um, and how do you differentiate yourself with with uh, with doing that? Um, you know, a lot of these kids now have gone through. They go to the, their national camps, and, and their sports psychologists there. Mm -hmm. They're learning different tricks, and, and so on and so forth. So maybe it's about reaching out and saying, so what has worked for you in the past, mm -hmm. and what hasn't, and what can we? How can I be? Of, how can I help you? What do you need from me? And then I can turn around. I'm not a hockey player. I, mm -hmm. but I can help with the. I can help guide you and strengthen your mind so that you're able to, to, com to compete at the, and be, be your best. Um, it's, it's a tough one to walk, but always having, you know, when it's all said and done, having someone's back is, is uh, and showing that you're there for them will, will certainly open the door, and then it's a matter of you earning their trust. Mm. So if it's something in uh, early stages that you can do to have a low-lying fruit, Mm. get into their head a little bit um, you know superstitions are an easy one I find a, you know some guys have this superstition where they you know it has to be the same way or, or so on and so forth and 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 being able to beat up on that superstition so that it's not as important or mm. if at all mm. depleted from the, the psyche of the so removing the importance of the superstition from their routine and their preparation and I just, helping that, that, them Yeah, I always found that. that to be something that uh, was, not but it gains trust. It's mm. easy to do. It's mm -hmm. not as hard as something, but it's, uh, uh, you're starting to gain trust. You're showing traction. You're mm -hmm. showing your worth. Mm -hmm. And then from that, they're not, they might not see it right away, but they're not utilizing the energy and their mental focus on these nonsense. I, things that don't, yeah, they're nonsense. I used to have it too. Every time that clock hit 13, I, we're gonna get scored against. <laughs> um, and I had to clear it out. And it didn't take long, mm. but it, it's something that I, I had to do. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and I would, uh, I gained confidence in the person that I spoke to about, about little things like that. Yeah. Mm, and absolutely. And started to grow. And I want to make sure we take some time to talk about also some of the work that you're doing now um, in terms of taking care of people and um, looking out for the best in others and, and really spreading messages about taking care of others. But the work you do now in terms of your charities and your giving, especially around the concussion space, um, what got you interested in uh, concussion education and research? Yeah, yeah, I just, I think we can do a lot better in that, in that environment. I, I don't see 
I don't see that field working as a team. Mm -hmm. I don't think that there's a, I don't think it's as efficient as it, as it could be. I, I see a lot of silos and, and we have great people here. There's great people around the world working on, on concussion, but um, I don't see them working together as well as they could, and especially here in, in Canada. Um, I always felt that if I had a problem and I went into a room, it'd be a whole lot better if there were 10 pros that knew something about it to fix the problem than walking in and just talking to one person. Mm. You might get lucky with the one, but uh, my odds, I would just think that my odds are better with if, uh, if there were more. So we're, we're, we're working in that sense. I, we're, we're trying to, I, I would like to see things branded and simplified. I think we, there's a lot of people out there trying to do great work, but when I say to you, Amber Alert, you're gonna think a missing child. Mm. And here in Ontario, we had a woman, a, a, young, a young lady that passed away, her name was Rowan Stringer, and we just, uh, mm. she passed away from second impact syndrome um, playing rugby, and we just had her first Rowan's, Rowan's Law Day. Uh, and from, from her death, uh, a horrible situation, that her, uh, there's, been, there's been at least some, some positive in, 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 uh, in looking at uh, uh, how we go about things and how we, we can get information through to the school system. How can we get to the minor league systems? Um, but I would really like to, to s when you say the name Rowan, I'd like it to be synonymous with concussion. Mm -hmm. and, and these aren't hard things to, to be doing. We've got 72 different school districts here in, in Ontario, but they all have their own protocol. I don't understand why that's that's the way it is, uh, you know, whether you're in Sudbury or, or Sarnia, I think everything is, uh, you know, I, I don't, I don't see the, I don't see why. I think it's efficient to have all the same. When you're coming in and you're seeing doctors, the forms are consistent so that information can be shared, a database can be set up, people can draw from that information. Um, and then whether it's happening here in Ontario or happening in, in, in Calgary, Alberta, uh, why can't we why can't we we blanket this so that it's uh, it's coast to coast so uh, we're working on that it's 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 don't get me wrong concussion has come a long way uh, I'm not even going to touch the pro side of sport with concussion because as soon as you start mixing money with athletics it's uh, it's it's a blurred area over there um, but we can we can be looking out for one another a lot better uh, um, yeah not just as a parent you're going into a game uh, or to watch your, your, your son or daughter play it or perform, and you're, of course, looking out for them, but let's be looking out for their teammates. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, let's be looking out for the opposition as well. I think overall we could be looking out for each mm -hmm. other in a much greater, uh, much greater light. Yeah. Yeah. Seems like a common, common thread throughout your entire career mm -hmm. and, and the work you do now, you know, looking out for your teammates, being there together, and bringing folks together around the concussion <laughs> space right now. Well, I, I think you <laughs> nice words. There's, uh, the space is changing. Um, we've talked about change. Everyone talks about making collaborative moves. Mm -hmm. We just haven't done it to the extent that I think that we were capable of. So um, it, it's, it's moving along, but I'd just like to see things. See, there's some real basics to this that I mentioned mm -hmm. before about, you know, Highs in uh, hitting puberty uh, and, the, and the difference in sizes. Why we can we can jump on that right away. We do not need to be spending five million dollars to have a test to realize that taking hitting out of it is going to reduce concussion. Mm. Uh, you know, it's common sense. Um, it, common sense can be placed with concussion and CTE, uh, where there hasn't been a direct link uh, in the in the medical world. But common sense says, all right, <laughs> there's something there. Mm. Uh, so. I'm more of a jumper. I don't need to. Uh, yeah, I, I'll, I'll build the bridge and, and uh, I'll, I'll make some bets along the way. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I'd like to see things moving along. Yeah. yeah. And and the organization you work with is See the Line. Is oh, that's just uh, Western. So yeah, I have an affiliation with the University of Western Ontario or Western University now, and uh, we run a concussion symposium there every year where we try and bring in doctors from not just uh, Canada but from across the across the states. Uh, Ann McKee's been in. Uh, Bob. Uh, can. Um, we've had uh, doctors out of Philadelphia, New York, uh, and we're trying to bring people in and hear what they're what they're up to, mm. and how can we work together, or piggyback mm. on what you're doing, and, and maybe complement. And uh, and if you're up to it, can we absorb what the, the what information you have? And then the second day of this is to have a public symposium. And it, 
In the past, we've primarily based it around athletics because it does get more of the attention, but we're transitioning into, because concussions are occurring to more than, uh, more than 50% of concussions are occurring off the ice or off the pitch or off mm -hmm. the athletic, uh, uh, in, in, in an environment that's not athletic, uh, we're going to the everyday, you know, what are, what, how, how are we going to approach this? With Rowan's, uh, Rowan's Law Day, there's, there's a, a back to school uh, mm. sc uh, kit that they, they talk about and what should be occurring between the parents, the communication with the teachers, the communication with um, the, the coaches. Uh, how, how does this all work together? So we're, we're focusing and we're going to pivot and transition more to uh, getting people back to work, what can be done to get kids back to school, because having a concussion isn't just about the primary, and it's the case for, for, for a lot of illnesses, many illnesses, uh, most situations, is it's not just what occurs to that particular person, but it's the ripple effect of what happens around um, the family and, and, and people around, uh, ar around them, their environment, and, and what needs to occur to, to pick them up. Do, do parents have to skip work to be, there's, there's, a, there's a, lot of, uh, a lot of give with this. So um, how do we better understand this? How can we go at it? Uh, as smoothly and efficiently as possible, and how do we get people, uh, concussions are going to occur, but how do we get people back to feeling A1 again uh, mm -hmm. as quickly as possible so that, that they're, they're ready to go? And from your own experience with concussions, were there things that really helped you um, and things that you took away from that experience that you're hoping will be transformed in the future of concussion recovery? Well, unfortunately, the, a lot of the protocols were, uh, are, are pretty similar. We haven't made Science is so slow with catching mm -hmm. up to what's going on, and we've really just, I don't think we've, we've our focus hasn't been the brain. Concussion mm -hmm. was the C word that we just never spoke about uh, in the 90s. It started to come uh, of, of late, uh, or in the last 20 years, I'll, I'll say the late 90s, um, uh, due to athletics, I think. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it's, it's moved on, it, it's, it's starting to, to, to take, take shape, but you know, the protocols that I went through, uh, through James Kelly, so I was, I was hurt a lot uh, and, and I would go to my team and say, I've got, I'm not feeling well at all, I'm off. They sent me to a migraine specialist and I in turn, the migraine specialist sent me out to Chicago to see a doctor by the name of James Kelly. And James Kelly was kind of this lead guru. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, he's working with a lot of the military uh, people uh, coming back with uh, IED problems and, and so on and so forth. But I got to see him in the 90s, and, and, and I, it's a godsend, but uh, uh, he spoke of, of transitioning things and working on increasing your heart rate as you're going so that, you know, blood is flowing. Anytime that you're feeling off, step it back, but, mm -hmm. you know, start working on, ba basing things on beats per minute mm -hmm. uh, and, and longevity of, of bike ride and, 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 and doing something gradual as opposed to being absolutely flat on your back in the dark and, and then jumping into something. So that was, that was really state of the art back then. Uh, and it's still what we use right now. <laughs> no, it may be good, it's not the only tool we have. I just think that we can do a little better. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and I'm hoping that, uh, that the, by grouping the researchers that uh, this is possible. Yeah. And it, it seems like you, looking back on your career and the work you're doing now, you know, it's about bringing people together and it's about adapting and, and evolving and overcoming things going forward. Um, has that always been sort of your approach to life, or is that something that is just evolving? Well, with you, you, you're not going to do well if you're if half your team's not if if your half your team's not playing well, you don't have a chance to win, right? Mm. So uh, I think it's uh, most of the guys that go through this uh, go through hockey or sport in general or realize that and and uh, and are open to uh, to doing their best to or, or putting effort into that that area of it. I think it's just you can turn it around and call it selfish because you're, you're going to be part of a winning team. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's the circle, right? Mm -hmm. um, you need everybody to, to perform well to, uh, to do well. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Well, at this point, we're going to transition to some questions from sure. the group, if Great. that's okay with you. So uh, there are a couple of mics that's positioned uh, throughout the room. And if you are interested in asking a question, go ahead and step forward. We'll acknowledge you and we'll have some, some questions. Um, over here, go ahead. Uh, Mr. Lindros, thanks so much for coming here. Uh, I'm Nate Sensor from West Point. Longtime Flyer fan. Uh, had the privilege of doing some sports psych work for Clarkie and Hitch, uh, a lot of the teammates that you mentioned. And I'd like to uh, ask you a question about the confidence that you mentioned earlier before. Uh, everybody knows that you've got to have confidence in order to be successful. 
but sometimes you can't be successful until you have the confidence. Which of those things come first in your experience, or how do you understand that dynamic? Uh, thank you. Yeah, that one's tricky, uh, and there are days even when you're at the, you're playing well that you know your confidence is gonna is gonna waver some. Um, a lot of it is, uh, you know, some people are, everyone's born differently, but having a, just a, a belief of the, you know, three simple things inside that you're, you're capable. Uh, I always felt that I could, I could adjust and I was prepared. So, uh, and, and going back to those three things, I would start to come out of the, the corner. Yeah, All right, those, were, those were helpful. Thank you. Yeah. Hi, Eva Monsma. I'm a professor at the University of South Carolina, um, but I'm a former Mustang um, from Western Ontario. Uh, my question revolves around uh, growth and maturation and if um, the NHL or OHL or any hockey league for that matter is aware of um, biobanding, which is getting kids that are developmentally similar um, playing in leagues that uh, facilitate their development because it's not all about, you know, who's gonna be knocked Have the best down. play against the best and so yeah. on and so forth. Right. I, th I, I can only speak for what I've gone through and what we have here in Toronto. So we have, it's called the Greater Toronto Hockey League and, mm -hmm. and there's, there's AAA, AA, single yep. A, house league, my, my kids in house league. Is um, it age based? Every, yeah, we're for, uh, there's yep. lots of kids that play hockey. So every, for every age group yep. going up, um, but I could see something <coughs> like that not occurring in environments where there isn't the population, um, which, would, uh, which would make it hard. So what, what would you think the barrier would be to facilitating leagues that don't go age-based, but rather development? Well, uh, uh, physical, I'm talking physical development, biobanding. Say physical. that again? What bio, biobanding is a physical development categorization. Having, having leagues without contact up to age 16, is that what you're? No, I'm talking physical, about. Like how, mu how big, how tall they are, how much they've developed physically as sure. athletes, and rather than you know 14 and under and 15 and under. I don't know how you do that. I, I always thought that would be more based way. on age and, and looking at <laughs> puberty and thinking, well, most people have gone, most guys have gone through puberty by the time they're 15 and, and working it backwards. You right. did, you played up though, you said, with older players when mm -hmm. you were a kid. Yeah. So, were, but, and you were undersized at that point? I was, or yeah. Well, were you I was, still hung with them? Well, you, you find your way, <laughs> right? <laughs> but, and I had, uh, I had really good teammates that looked out for me. Yeah. So I wasn't, uh, uh, I wasn't picked on too much, but uh, okay. no. Um, I just think that we could, uh, like getting back to that point about, about contact, contact is something that if you watch, if you watch a woman's, a woman's game, uh, and watch a, a woman's, uh, women's hockey in the Olympics, they're, they're awesome, it's awesome game. Mm -hmm. But the rule is that there's no, there's no, supposed to be no contact. They're still rubbing out and there's physical play along the boards and so on and so forth. But it's still fantastic, it's, a, it's great to watch. Um, why can't we take that and just put it in until people are at least uh, on equal territory? Over here, yeah. Um, thanks, uh, Mr. Lindros, for uh, joining us it's today. It's Eric. Or, yeah. <laughs> thanks, Eric. Yeah, yeah. Um, yesterday, we heard uh, <laughs> Mr. Mark Shapiro talk to us about uh, the type of culture that he tries to build as, um, as a top executive uh, on a franchise. Mm -hmm. I assume that you've heard similar pitches from higher execs to yourself in, during your career. And I'm curious, from, from a professional player's perspective, does the organizational culture actually have a tangible influence on what you did on a day-to-day -day basis? I think it does. I think it's, uh, it's, one, of the, it's one of many variables, but it's, it's certainly something that's present. Um, having alumni around from time to time is, can be helpful. It depends on the alumni. It all depends on who's, you know, uh, who's doing it? Remembering the past uh, is 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 something. Uh, you know, it's not going to win or lose you the, the the future, but by remembering it, it I, I I think that you have uh, a lot to pull from and 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 uh, some strength to be gained from that. Mm -hmm. um, 
there's helpful guys out there. I had, I would go to guys that had, had played um, in the in the in the environment, and you know whether it be simple life things or whether it be the game itself. Um, I would rely on. We had Gary Dornhofer uh, in Philadelphia. He was one of the uh, announcers there, and he was a very knowledgeable guy. And and then uh, I had a good uh, rapport with him, and I he would he would be one of the persons that I would I would go to. So. Um, yeah, I, I think uh, you know that 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 culture of a, t of a of an organization that you're you're not just speaking of looking out for your guys, but you actually do it. You know, you're uh, just the little things of, of where you're staying as a, at a hotel, uh, the, the the small things that 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 make the that, that make people feel good. Mm -hmm. um, they might not matter to you that much, but to to, to some other people, that that's, that's a big deal. To make everyone feel special make everyone feel that they're part of something and, and, and pulling together. Yeah. Do you feel that was um, part of your role as players to create that feeling or was it and or was it um, influenced by the coaches and management around you and the team around you? Which I think it's both. Both. I think it's a it's a responsibility. I, I was fortunate enough to play with Kevin Bedeen. Mm -hmm. uh, he was our captain when I first came into the league and I don't know if it happens today but I don't think it does. My last few years, we didn't have this, but we used to room together. Mm -hmm. So I would room, my first year, I room with, uh, uh, with a veteran. My second year, uh, Dave Brown. Third year, I was with Craig McTavish, who was one of the, the veterans. Uh, so you're, you're absorbing, you're being around them. You're, you're on the road half the time, so mm -hmm. you know, that's your roommate, that's your, 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 you're asking questions, you're, you're seeing what they're doing. And, and hopefully they're doing some good things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> <laughs> so. there's, there's pros and cons with it all. Uh, because there's some veterans that you just, uh, you, you know, would want to stick with a guy over there with it. But uh, for the most part, I, I, I think if, uh, if, if you have a good, good group and that's a, that's a big deal, um, it's getting the right, uh, the getting right mix and having, like you look here in Toronto, they, they brought in uh, Marlo. Marlo's a pro. Mm. Marlo, he knows, he's, he's fantastic. Uh, he's, he's business. Uh, he's, he's responsible, he's matured of, he's got his family, but he's also got time for all the guys on his, on his squad. Yeah. Yeah. Take another question here. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was wondering uh, what advice you'd have for parents that are getting caught up in like the year-long thing and kind of the professionalization yeah. of youth hockey. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah that's a good, good term. Um, don't do it. <laughs> uh, you know, and if your kid's gonna play pro, he's gonna play pro. But uh, is that the real goal of it? I, I'll tell you right now that playing pro is not the end all be all of life. Mm -hmm. uh, it's great to have, the idea for me of sport was having fun with friends and, and uh, uh, you know, if you wanna utilize it as a, a road to a university or college, that's, that's great as well. Um, I never dreamed of playing pro till I was about, you know, 16, 17 years old and I thought, you know, and I can, maybe I can squeeze a few years in here and, 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 and play. And I it just, I never really clued in until uh, the next year that, you know, I got a real, real shot at this. Um, being diverse is, is, is a big deal and, and it'll be a big deal when you go and, and you're face to face with, with a group of people uh, because not everyone is built the same way. Not everyone thinks the same way. Uh, we're, all, we're all different and, and uh, I, uh, Roger Nielsen uh, was a very interesting coach to me. He was a, a teacher uh, at heart. And what I loved about Roger is he would understand that certain people are motivated in certain fashions and others are completely different. Some you just, you don't even talk to. You just <laughs> leave them. They're doing great. Just everything's fine. Others need a lot more support. Uh, they want to have more of a rapport and, and communicate more. It is the job to figure that out and to have the balance and, and not treat everyone with the same brush. Same way as you'd go about uh, training uh, physically, uh, people, a physical trainer's not gonna sit there and say, well, th I'm gonna have the same program for every one of you. It doesn't work that way. And it's gotta be that same way when you go in and approach, uh, and approach uh, a, a team and, and individuals. They're all, they're all special, they're all their own file, and they're all in one way or another uh, uh, different. Thank you. That's actually all the time that we have for questions. So those of you who we didn't get to, I do apologize. Um, but at this point, we do, and on behalf of ASP, I'd like to present you with 
um, the 2018 Performance oh. Excellence Award to Mr. Eric Lindros. Much appreciated. Thank, Thank you very much. much. There you go. Thank you. Yeah. I think we're done. Yeah, we're done. <laughs> 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 Thank you all for attending. Sure. Thank you, guys. Good luck. Thanks very much. Eric's around for questions afterwards. Appreciate it. <laughs>